Today, we're going to dive into Hired's 2020 State of Software Engineers. Now, this is a report they put out every year, actually just came out yesterday. It talks about, you know, average salaries, most in-demand languages for jobs, uh, et cetera. And there's, there's something pretty interesting going on in London. So if you're in London or the UK, I would love to get your thoughts on that. We'll get into that when we get into the numbers. But speaking of the numbers, anytime you deal with a report like statistics, percentages, uh, you got to find out the methodology. So let's go down to the methodology section real quick, just to be sure, like, and see where they got these numbers from. So uh, methodology here. So it says the this report is based on proprietary information by Hired's data science team. Uh, for the purpose of this report, we focus on software engineers in 13 cities. So that's a big thing to remember. This is mostly from larger cities, which to be fair, that's where a lot of tech is. Uh, the data reflect more than 400,000 uh, interview requests from 10,000 participating companies and 98,000 job seekers, so nearly 100,000 job seekers. So I think it's a pretty big sample size, but I think the key thing to remember, this is only for like bigger cities, so keep that in mind. And then in the second half of the report, they do a survey, and that survey was from 1,600 software engineers. So it's kind of a smaller sample size, but uh, let's get into some numbers now. The first section we're going to dive into is the hottest jobs in software engineering. And real quick, I'm not going to go through this report line by line. I'm just going to go through the highlights, give you my thoughts on it, and hopefully spark a discussion uh, in the comments. But if you want to dig into the full report, there'll be a link in the description. And also, this is not a sponsored post or anything, but I do have a referral link from Hired. That'll be in the description as well. All right, back to the hottest jobs in software engineering. Says, Over the last year, hundreds of thousands of interview requests came through Hired's marketplace, giving us a rare look at what jobs and skills are most in demand. And then each year, there appears to be a trendy new role that explodes and that's what we're going to see here so demand growth for engineering roles here uh ar and vr just exploded and this isn't surprising i guess of course the percentage again take that with a grain of salt because if we click on 2018 look ar vr engineer percentage growth didn't exist because it says role did not register near the top of the list last year so a year over year comparison will be available in 2021 so what that tells me is that like it was a small number so 1400% growth on a small number, you know, take that with a grain of salt, but it still uh, shows that I think what we all kind of expected that AR and VR is going to be a thing and it was more in demand in 2019. Uh, curious to see what 2020 brings. And then here in second place, you have gaming engineer with 146%. That was interesting because obviously gaming has been around forever. I'm curious because my hypothesis on gaming is like as I think my generation, I'm 38 years old, was like the like Nintendo came out when I was eight. So I think I'm at like the very beginning of like the gamer generation. But every generation after me like grew up with games like that's all they know. So I'm wondering if we're starting to see this as they age up and become adults, like gaming just being more and more popular. Again, that's not like a super hot take, like that's pretty common sense. But I'm wondering if that's why we see the gaming engineer uh, percentage increase. But again, again, I'm not going to go line by line. You can see the other uh, professions that are growing. Here's some insights for AR VR. 74% of software engineers predict we will see a full impact of AR VR within the next five years. I don't, you know, I think that's kind of common sense. We will probably see that. 46% uh, of software engineers rank AR and VR as one of the top three technologies they'd like to learn in 2020. Speaking for myself, uh, that would definitely be in my top three. Because again, Apple's AR glasses allegedly aren't too far off. So I think that's when we'll start to see the mainstream. Of course, there'll be some couple years of like working the kinks out of like the first version of it. But I, I think that'll be the start of it, you know, remains to be seen. Uh, companies are keeping pay competitive. So this is how uh, pay has increased uh, from 2019 uh, from city to city. So here in the San Francisco Bay Area and the, the jobs are over here on the left, you can see that like five, six, five, six percent. I guess that's pretty typical. I wouldn't put too much stock in like, oh, search engineers number one and embedded engineers number 10 or whatever it is. Like, look at the difference between the bottom of the list and the top of the list. 155K to 165K. <laughs> that, that's an irrelevant difference. Trust me. When you make 155K, if all of a sudden now you're making 165K, your life isn't going to change one bit. Like, it's the same thing. So to me, I read this as these are all great competitive salaries uh, if you can get them. But again, that's San Francisco. Remember at the beginning of the video, I said something weird's going on in London? Well, we're going to get to that. So again, 5 6% raise. Of course, Gaming Engineer got at the 11% raise. That's interesting. Uh, New York, very, very similar. Uh, you know, 5 to 7%. Machine Learning in New York, getting a little, little bump there. Toronto, you see, it looks like a lot of uh, pay increase for data engineers, search engineers, huge increase, but you can see what's going on there. <laughs> Blockchain in Toronto, minus two. 
little fun fact if you don't know there's a lot of like ethereum based companies based in toronto because uh, that's kind of where ethereum started so it seems like you're seeing the reflection of kind of the crypto market dip which kind of coming back a little bit it's beside the point but uh you can see this is uh seeing the effects of the crypto market dipping with the blockchain uh, engineer so let's get to london here london like what is going on um Everything like across the board is like 15%, 18%, 25%, 17%. These are the pay raises. I'm curious, if you're in London or the UK, leave a comment. Like, are you seeing, you know, new engineering jobs come on that are paying a lot more? I mean, these are, for a year over year raise, the 18, 17, 25, 18%, like that's a pretty big raise. So curious what's going on in London. It seems like salaries uh, are going up. All right, the next section is most in-demand coding languages across the globe. Now here's how they measured this, right? Because again, this is all important. The number of interview requests per candidate on hired. So that means if I'm a Swift engineer, go down to Swift, uh, I would get 6.5 interview requests on average. Of course, not everybody's is the same, but on average, 6.5 interview requests when I get on hired. Real quick, a thing about hired, what makes it, in my opinion, a good platform is that you have to get approved to be on hired. They don't just like let anybody on the platform for the companies to interview. So take these numbers with a grain of salt. This doesn't mean if you sign up for hire, you're getting six interviews. You have to get approved to be on the platform and they take in your like years experience, skill set, uh, all that stuff. But once you get approved, now you're likely to get interview requests. So you can see Go is number one with 9.2 interview requests per candidate on hired. That's pretty interesting. And you, you can see the list here again. I'm not going to go through it. Swift coming in right in the middle of the list. Objective C. That's that's interesting. 6.8, 6.5. Uh, weird to see that. And when I first saw this, I thought it was weird that JavaScript was down low. But I guess that's such a popular language, like the supply and demand. You know, there's probably a ton of JavaScript developers uh, on the site. So I don't know. Just interesting. Like what I think would be an interesting number to see is the number of developers that actually get on hired in Go right because if like there's only extreme example here if there's only like 10 go developers of course their interview requests are going to be high so i think we're missing the the denominator here um i would love to see the number of developers per language on the platform i think that will put these numbers more in context but hey this is what we got uh and you can kind of see the most in-demand languages uh, across the globe and here we're breaking down those most in-demand languages that same interviews per candidate number by city and they only show these four cities but i think this tells an interesting story right uh, if you hover over san francisco bay area okay that looks very similar to like what we just saw when it comes to like interviews per candidate that makes sense that's san francisco now look when we go to toronto those numbers drop and this just goes to illustrate that like the, the city you live in does matter because Toronto obviously doesn't have as many tech jobs, as many companies as San Francisco. So that's why when you go back to San Francisco, you're getting all these interview requests from companies, right? It's a supply and demand thing. But this just illustrates the, the size of the city, you know, based on the interviews you can get. And of course, I'm not saying this is an absolute. This is kind of like in general based on statistics. Of course, this isn't like a hard and fast rule. But anyway, New York, you see it kind of bump up. Not quite San Francisco numbers, but more in line. But now let's go to London. Like what's going on, London? London. Bam, way above even San Francisco. So that's, again, if you're in London or, or the UK, I, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Salaries appeared to go way up and demand appears to go way up based on this. Again, go back to San Francisco, which is, you know, obviously kind of like the, the standard, uh, decent numbers. London, way bigger numbers. So I don't know, curious again, if you're from London, leave it in the comments. Are you kind of seeing more demand, higher salaries? Again, super curious what you have to, uh, to say if you live in that area. Moving on, we have the most commonly used programming languages by software engineers. Of course, JavaScript is number one. No surprise there. Python and Java coming in two and three. Not shocking at all. Uh, we got Swift. By the way, if you're if you're not familiar with my audience and community, I'm an iOS developer. I write Swift. I do Swift tutorials. So when you see me mention Swift, that's that's why. Um, but yeah, Swift way down at the bottom. But that's not surprising. Again, Swift is super niche for now. Of course, it's expanding to the, the server side Swift and machine learning at Google, that kind of stuff. But for now, and it's only five years old, so it's a very, very young language. So, but Swift is way down there. That's super niche, but again, that's expected. But yeah, you can see the uh, most commonly used languages. And then in this section, we talk about experience. So this is how many interviews you're getting uh, on hired uh, based on your years of experience. So four to six years of experience, again, per language, uh, you can see that's kind of like the baseline, uh, average of 7.7, .7, that's what they gave there. If you have six to 10 years experience, that goes up a little bit, uh, 7.8, and again, you can see it per language if you like. Uh, here's the interesting thing though, 10 years experience it drops considerably. So uh, I'm not sure what to make of that. Again, would love to hear what you think in the comments. Um, my initial thought is that, it, you know, if you have 
10 plus years experience, you're probably very expensive if you're still uh, an independent contributor, like writing code and you're not like a manager or anything like that. Um, you're probably pretty expensive. So I'm, I'm guessing that's why companies on hired are looking more for the four to six year range or, or the six to 10 year range. Or I guess you could call that the four to 10 year range. Um, so interesting that if you have over 10 years experience, you know, maybe there's not too many companies looking for somebody with that much experience to pay them what they're worth. Anyway, just my thoughts on that one. Now we're onto the survey section. Remember they surveyed 1600 uh, software engineers. So again, take this with a grain of salt, but factors that influence an engineer's language preference. So reasons they love a language is the ecosystem i.e. libraries and packages. So that's the number one. 73% of people say they love a language if it has a lot of good libraries and packages. Personally, again, as a native Swift developer, you don't really rely on libraries too often in our profession. So to me, that's not a big deal. But again, in the JavaScript world, from what little bit I know, uh, I, I understand that's a huge thing. So that number makes sense being high because of that 1,600 developers, based on what we just saw, a lot of those are probably JavaScript developers. So again, this is why you have to like kind of dissect the numbers and not like apply everything to you. Because again, me being a Swift native iOS developer, I know that libraries and packages aren't the number one thing for the language for me. So again, keep these numbers in context. You see resources available, that makes sense, 70%. It's fun to program in, would agree with that. You know it well, et cetera, et cetera. So next up, we have building a better interview. And then we have a survey here. Which part of the interview process is most stressful? Coding exams of 42%, whiteboarding sessions at 38%. I put whiteboarding way above coding exams, but that's just me. And then obviously behavioral interviews are, are pretty easy for the most part. Uh, what do you think about coding exams? 66% say they're irrelevant to the daily job. 31% say they're a good way to test the candidate's aptitude. Uh, lifelong learning, continual developer education. How did you learn to program? 50% of them said a computer science degree. Think about that. Of 1,600 developers, only 50% of them had a computer science degree. Of course, 50% is a big number, but I think that number is just gonna continue to go down and down as more resources become available online to learn how to program, the self-taught, the boot camps. And by the way, I'm not knocking a computer science degree. I think obviously having those computer science theory fundamentals is huge for you. But my opinion is, you know, spending four years at a university and potentially spending a ton of money to get that degree may not be worth it in the long run for everybody. Again, of course, everybody's different, but it's interesting to see that we're kind of at a 50-50 split on uh, software engineers that have a computer science degree. And then here we have more survey stuff. What technology or skill are you most interested in learning about? Of course, machine learning, AR, VR, user experience. I was thrilled to see user experience up there. Uh, my personal take on development is I think a lot of engineers don't pay enough attention to like design and UX and all that stuff. Uh, so I loved seeing that uh, up there. And the last section we're going to talk about is kind of a fun one. Uh, dispelling myths about software engineers. Again, this is from that 1600 developer survey. If forced to choose, would you rather get up early uh, and finish work early or sleep in and work late? So I think the common stereotype, right? And of course, stereotypes aren't always true, is that developers like to sleep in and work late. I'm the other way. I would, if I could make my own schedule, which I do, uh, you know, I'd be getting up at like 6 a.m. working and being done by two, you know? Uh, so that's just me. But 66% of those surveyed prefer to get up early and finish work early, whereas 34% like to sleep in and work late. So I thought that was interesting. What do you think? Le leave a comment on, on what you prefer. Uh, if forced to choose, would you rather work remotely 100% of the time or come into an office every day? This is interesting too, because I've bounced back and forth in my career from like working on a team to independent contracting to doing my own YouTube thing. So I've basically bounced back and forth between an office and remotely. And I think there's a good reason why this is pretty much split down the middle. Of course, you have a ton of developers out there that say remote is the only way. And then other developers that like going to an office. I think it's personal preference because I, speaking from experience, after working remotely by myself for like a year and a half, like I start wanting to go into an office and interacting with people and being on a team. And then after doing that for like a year and a half, I want to go back the other way. So I get why this was split down the middle. The sounds of productivity and fuel for workflow. So basically what kind of music you listen to. I don't listen to music. I find music distracting when I'm coding, uh, unless I'm on like autopilot doing something I've done a hundred times, but uh, electronic dance, rock, classical. I don't know. What kind of music do you listen to? Uh, let me know in the comments. When it comes to energizing for the workday, coffee reigns supreme. Software engineers, top pick, black coffee, tea, lattes, yeah, coffee, coffee, coffee. But it says they're not as highly caffeinated as you think. A lot of people just do one cup. Uh, anyway, we're getting, like I said, we're getting into the fun stuff and then back to the methodology. So let's go back to the top. That wraps up the uh, State of Software Engineers for 2020. Again, they release this every year. Uh, link will be in the description if you want to go through the report yourself. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you in the next one.